flash caught out. Explosive cast will knock him back. Should be out of blade surge to freedom. No! Yakos comes in. There's the wave coming through. It's going to be Froggen and Tab's actually in the back there. Can they catch on towards Froggen? Yes, they, got they can. It. They just explode him. Yakos just off of the side there. Good stun. Tell him Such a good stun. out there. Good stun. That's in Zonja's out. That's in, that's just in trouble now. Use the explosive cast, but he gets picked off. Overpower. Have to use that chrono. Welcome to the late game. And then the alliance gets stun towards him. Welcome back, everyone. Let's take a quick look at that last match where Alliance came back in the late game to beat Rock Adam. Let's first take a look at picks and bans. Something curious for me, a Maokai ban coming out of Alliance, and then, of course, the first pick, Gragas from Rocket. They didn't seem to be afraid of it, though. No, definitely not. Second game today that the Gragas was first picked, uh, Deficio was actually talking about the Maokai ban and theorizing as to why he thinks teams were taking it off the table. And I would dare say, banning it against Zazus, who played very well last week, may be a comfort thing. It may be a situation where Alliance didn't really want to give that tree away because they're not 100% sure to deal with it. Whereas a Gragas, you know what he's going to do in theory. You can, in theory, prepare for it. Rocket had a strong early game, but in the late game, Alliance did have an answer. Yeah, and Joe, talking about that early game, was just Jankos coming in hot once again. It's uh, incredible, I like, somehow. Rock out have had 19 first bloods this split so far, and Jankos has actually got 11 of them, kills himself. Like, he was a machine in the first 15, 20 minutes of this game, just racking up kill after kill. Top lane, they managed to get two straight after each other. Wicked died twice then at the bottom, which we've just seen there in uh, that little clip. And he just had a fantastic early game, which got Rock out set up, but just shows you that Whatever of an early game you have, if you don't finish at the right times, depending on your team composition, you're going to have troubles. Yeah, let's actually take a look at one rock that was very strong in the beginning of that game. Let's pull the replay up on the screen because, as you said, they had all those advantages and they were able to capitalize on it early. So 30 minutes into the game, five kill advantage, towers are even, but Rocket are going to play their comp very, very effectively. If we roll this clip out, you'll notice that Rocket they don't really hesitate to engage, and the tidal wave manages to catch Froggen and Shook. And just such great reaction speed from Zazus. He insta-gives Froggen and just removes the, the threat from the map. Now, Rocket continue to chase through. They're going to force Shook to uh, flash away, and Rocket peel back to get the first Baron of the game. The problem for Rocket was they developed a lead, they had a strong mid-game comp, and then they just stalled. They got three towers very early on, and then they only took two more towers of the next 15 minutes, and they didn't know how to break that inhibitor line. It is the most difficult objective to prove or to break, and Rocket again showing they are struggling in their late game. And that was the reason Alliance had all the time in the world to come back. And I think it's a confidence thing as well. We've heard them before say, when we get in the lead, we're scared of closing things out. And this game showed me exactly that once again from Rocket. We saw times where they'd go back and forth on a turret and after five, six, eight minutes, they'd just tank it up. Why didn't they do that five, six, eight minutes before that and then move on to the next thing? And I think, as you said, they just took far too long and they were too undecisive about it. Yeah, absolutely. And let's actually take a look at a replay that shows what happens when you let a comp like Alliances go far and, and take the lead again. So the next replay, this is the game-winning team fight for Alliance. And the most important thing to note is Rocket's positioning on the map. First and foremost, Overpal is uh, you know, two or three screens away from the rest of his team. Let's roll this clip out and just pay very careful attention to how Rocket are split up. They initially like to play aggressive and Vanda does not get a very good tidal wave off. Most of Alliance managed to avoid it. And now that one of the massive threats for disengage is no longer available to Rocket, again, they're slightly split up, some in the lane, some going through the channel, and uh, it's Alliance that just turned the aggression on. They jump onto Rocket and instantly catch Saliva as well as Zazus out. Those are your two sort of damage carries. Zazus was building Mage. He wasn't building tanky top Gragas. He was looking to burst people and he just simply wasn't in a position to take advantage of that. This is a positional error that cost Rock at the game. If they had been tight to net or they had initiated more correctly or faster in that situation, they may have been able to punish Alliance, but the shoe was on the other foot and Alliance closed out. Yeah, 12k gold lead just before that fight actually kicked off. And I also think that Zazas hit his Zonyas too early. The binding hit and they weren't going full on to Zazas, he hit Zonyas, the rest of the team moved away, and from there, it's just a case of one by one by one. And one thing as well, Zazas still had his flash. There was a fantastic comment that I read on, on Reddit last week. It said that the perfect time to flash is just before it's too late. <laughs> and it was far too late for Zazas and got killed. 
that it always knows best. <laughs> anyway, we're going to check out with you guys at home because earlier in the broadcast, we wanted to know which European LCS team do you think will come away with the third place spot this Super Week and why the first answer is from ATC Tenchi. Millennium will make third place ever since their promotion series performance against NIP. They have shown consistently. And funnily enough, we've always said they were inconsistent, but it seems that it's turning out pretty well. Well, they're definitely leveling up as the weeks have gone on. In the preview show, I actually said that Super Hot Crew or Millennium were my teams that I'm anticipating to take third. We need to see how they handle themselves uh, this week though, but they are definitely on the up and up. They split pushed effectively two weeks ago, something we didn't see them do at the beginning of the split. <laughs> the second one is from at J1 Lee. Fanatic, uh, uh, the super hot crew, with Selfie's explosive plays and Mr. Rala being so consistent, I believe the super hot crew can overtake Fnatic. So Fnatic, actually, in the end. Oh, yeah. I actually disagree with that. I think that Fnatic have shown us in the last few weeks that they're consistently better. I think they have shown us that they're a top two team. I don't see them losing it out, out to it in Super Week, honestly. I, Fnatic have done well in Super Weeks previously, and I think they'll continue that form. The last one is from at Paddy Zex. Remember last split playoffs, Rocket managed to surprise everyone and clinch third place. This time will be the same. So that's an interesting one as well, because... Of course, it, it's three place six, four place five, and then of course you go into the third place decider. So we'll need to see how they work out in the playoffs. But for the regular season, with that loss, I think it's looking more unlikely for Rocket to take it in the regular season, maybe in playoffs. Need to work on our confidence on closing games out. We always love to hear from you, so remember to follow us at LL Esports and use the hashtag LCS to join in on the conversation. Now, before we send things back over to Demon and the Fischio, the Copenhagen Wolves' Unlimited hopes that with a little luck, they can send Fnatic back on a losing streak. Fnatic are super strong right now. It will definitely be really hard to beat them. They're on a huge winning streak, but they shown before that they have winning streak and then there is a losing streak following up. So maybe if we're lucky, then it will be their losing streak. I think that's a little bit of confidence, yeah. maybe hopeful. A but uh, I think Unlimited needs reminding that the last game they played, they won Fnatic. So they took down Millennium. So let's see yeah. if they're on the win streak once again. Let's get these things going. It is the Copenhagen Wolves here. I'm going to be taking on Fnatic. And this is a tough game for the Wolves as they are yet to record a victory over Fnatic so far this season. Earlier today, of course, they were knocked out of playoff contention as well by Gambit. And Copenhagen Wolves actually had a fine start to the game. They got the very first dragon. But then once again, like we've seen before with the Copenhagen Wolves, they engage in a wrong dragon fight, they lose it, and end up just falling so far behind. They tried to catch Diamond, he escaped, the rest of Gambit came in and just destroyed the Wolves. And once you fall behind to such an insane siege comp that Gambit had, there was nothing the Wolves could actually do. And we have to talk about Broken Shard. He played Rengar, the first time he plays at the end of ULCS, didn't play too many games yet. And the curse of Rengar in Europe huh. is still here. The Rengar players, man, they can win games. It's they just keep losing. And it's, it's so hard to play him correctly. And we just see it time it. and time again. That's the big thing. It's so hard to play him correctly. Because, you know, if you if you pounce in a little bit too early, the rest of the team's not in the same way. But yeah. you're dead. You're not getting out. And we actually saw some miscommunication between Soren and, and Broken Shard in some of the late game team fights where Soren should put a should have put the Oriana ball onto Rengar yes. onto Bong when I he jumped in. I think he went too far away. From Maybe him. he did. I'm not sure what happened, but he we never really got to see it. Him. We never really got to see the combo. Mm. I think I think he outranged him. I think that's what the problem was. Well, last week of course Fnatic's hope of breaking their own win streak was shut down by Alliance. However, they bounced back strong and faced a tough millennium in the next game and picked up the win. Against the Wolves, while well, they have some pretty insane KDA stats in their three wins so far this season. If we look at the mid lane, well, you know what Peke is like. Soren has a big problem ahead of him because Peke is 11, 1, and 28. That's a 39 KDA against the Wolves alone this split. It gets worse, though. Look at Reckless. He is currently on a 34, 1, 25. That is a 59 KDA just against the Wolves in those three games. They are currently big favorites coming into this game. I'm not sure what happened to Reckless here, but uh, it's pretty weird <laughs> compared to what we normally see. Anyway, Fnatic as a team also dominates Copenhagen Wolves on the map. I mean, they've only lost two, 
two dragons and three towers in all the games against Copenhagen was this split here. So really heavily in favor of Fnatic here. I do, however, want to talk about Cyanide and his champion pool. I don't know if it's an issue for him, but if you look back to last week, he first picked Evelyn over Gragas against Millennium, and he does have great stats on Evelyn and Elise together, where he has 8.5 KDA, which is great for him. But if you then look at his other junglers, he's not able to perform at the same level. He only has 1.9 KDA. In eight games, there's other junglers than Evelyn and Elise. So coming into playoffs, we might see teams target towards him, and try and punish him for what seems to be a small champion pool. We don't actually know if he has something saved mm. in case he needs it. Now, of course, if Fnatic win this game, it's going to help them secure the number two spot and potentially chase the Lions for the number one spot. But the important thing is get into the semi-final for Fnatic and dodge Alliance. Make sure you can only face them in a potential grand final where you already are secured going to Worlds. Absolutely, they are the big team right now, as you just saw, <laughs> crazy turnaround for them. Let's check out the lineups for these two teams. I'm sure you know them by now. Over on the blue side, it is the Copenhagen Wolves. In the top lane is Youngbug, Broken Shark in the jungle, Soren in the mid lane, Woolite as the AD carry, and Unlimited and support. And on the red side, we have Fnatic with Source in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpec in the mid lane, Reckless with his new hairstyle in the, as the AD carry, and Yellowstar on support. Just switching things up, you know, he likes to try it out a little bit different. So, well, you're going to be getting the game underway in a moment for the picks and bans. Let's see who you guys have voted on to win this match. Not too surprised. It's a 92% vote for Fnatic. Oh, oh. Kind of, kind of expected a pretty big one there. We'd also like to remind you guys, of course, that you can still grab tickets to join us for the upcoming playoff games just next week. Get over to lolesports.com, click on the tickets for all of the details. Remember, third place, sixth, currently is Super Hot Crew versus Rocket. Rocket. Of course, fourth place, fifth, which should be on the Friday, is currently. Currently, I remember this could all change over the Super Week Millennium versus SK. Keep your eyes on that standings as we move throughout Super Week. So, pick and bands. What are we thinking? Are we going to see Rengar again coming out of Broken Shard? I mean, we're we going to see something change. So, Fnatic actually last week banned Lee Sin in both their games. Mm. But I don't think they're going to do it against Broken Shard because he's favored Java and now Rengar. We saw it here before. So, up in the air with the bands. Of course, we can say the standard Cassidy and Twisted Fate should be taken away. And maybe Copenhagen will want to target towards Xpeki with a fist. Well, or maybe Cyanide, as you just pointed oh, out. Oh, would be. Evelyn first ban. They know that Cyanide's favor goes that way. Cassidy being taken away. Didn't expect to see that one coming through. Thresh also and Oriana. So Soren XD being focused heavily there by those two bands. Cassidy kind of a given, but Oriana yeah. absolutely is his champion of choice. His main champion, again, looking at Solar Q. So very smart choice. He played it once. He went seven and one in the game and carried the Wolves. So very smart band by Fnatic. Didn't actually go with the least ban, however. Yeah, the Syndra ban, though, that is certainly aimed at Peke. It's something he has played. Not too many have played Syndra here in Europe. Of course, we saw Bjergsen going big on it last week. So far, it's not actually a champion that, as we mentioned last week, he likes to play against Kerb because he yeah. can shut down. He basically picks it if he wants to shut down that mid laner. Twisted Fate also banned out, so a lot of mid lane ban focus here. What are the walls going to take? Is it going to be Gragas in the top lane for Youngbok? So Lee Sin and Gragas could be the two top picks here, but again, we've seen Broken Shot play Java, and he likes to play it against Lee Sin even, so I don't expect Copenhagen to take an early jungler here. Should be the Gragas if Youngbok wants to play it up in the top lane. Otherwise, Lulu is open even though she's fallen out of favor here in Europe. We don't really see her very often anymore, even though the other regions still love to play her. For some reason, we don't like Lulu anymore. I'm not sure if it's because she's a Yordle or what it is. We like <laughs> big fat Gragas instead. Well, big fat Gragas looks like he may well get locked in again. If he is, that's the first three games running he will be first picked in and there we go again so gragas definitely the flavor of the month right now whoa oh, whoa whoa okay instant lock for fanatic there for both tristana and rengar so okay you call out cyanide for something else he pulls it out well let's see how he performs because rengar so far in europe and in na it's not been working out every single time we see it yes you can have some uh, Good early ganks after you hit your level 6 point, but then once it comes to team fights, it's very hard to set up. You need a lot of synergy to actually pull off a Rengar combo with the engage. We need to see if Fnatic can do it. They could definitely be a team with the teamwork to pull it off, but let's see. Oriana is banned, so they can't do the 
Oriana, Rengar here, but Tristana, actually a champion Reckless has, Reckless has been spamming in solo queue. Had a look at him because he used to play Lucian all the time, now he's of course disabled. Picked up a new champion and just a champion we have seen all around the world now. Very good laning phase, mid game a bit meh, but in late game you're an absolute beast. And of course it does allow Lee Sin to be available for Broken Shard who locks that in. And Braum, first time today we get to see him for Unlimited. Okay, so actually a support he loves to play and he loves to roam around. Make plays early. I believe he's actually his most played champion here in there. The summer split. So we could see uh, Unlimited look to roam around and make some plays. And I just talked about Lulu not being an option here in Europe anymore. I forgot we had Soaz in the game. Soaz in the game, but more importantly, Peke in the game on Fizz. Fizz is a champion that has been banned a lot. Certainly last week banned out yeah. so heavily, but now again picked back in that mid lane. What was Soren used to counter that? I actually expected Copenhagen was to ban the Fist here against the Pekka because it's been a champion Fnatic, or not a champion, but the playstyle Fnatic loves to use where they just pick off people left mm. and right. Who fits in? Fist, of course. Get a few kills early on and you just start rolling. You become an absolute split, push, uh, split pushing monster. You're good in teamfights as well because you can dodge around abilities. You have your hourglass. And when you already have a Rengar, it's so easy kills to set up for Fnatic if Copenhagen Wolves are out of position. So unless they run run as a unit, five together, there will be an opening where this should be able to get a kill. Yeah, if Cyanide sneaks in and stuns, then I was yeah. about to say, Ziggs in that mid lane is in desperate, desperate trouble. Warlight himself is in trouble, but it's going to be a Rise in the mid lane instead for Soren. So Rise could also actually be Rise top lane and Gragas mid lane here, but yes, I would expect Yongbok to play the Gragas at top. It's unlimited. You'll have the same issue where if Cyanide comes into the lane, especially after level 6, it's very easy to lock him down. But he's now looking to get a rod of ages, get some tanky items, and try and survive all the bursts coming in from Fnatic. Now switching support, it's going to be Morgana for Yellow Star. Fantastic performance over the last few weeks. Of course, broke 1,000 assists last week, Yellow Star. I actually tell a lie, Yellow Star nifted, yeah. but Yellow Star is very close. Yeah. And remember that record also counts him as an AD carry. So, True. what do we make of these two picks? What do we make of everything well, on the board? So, actually, if you do look at the comps here, we have the mid laner and the AD carry for both teams scaling really well into the late game here. We also have the top laners, very good, all around good laning phase, good mid game. Late game wise, they're not looking to be the big carries who just blows up people unless Gragas gets really, really far ahead. They're going to bring a lot of utility instead to the table. And then we have the two junglers actually looking to make picks, looking to set up fights. So, very similar picks in terms of what they can do scaling-wise on the side here for both teams. And then it's going to be all about the execution because Copenhagen was, they want a team fight. But a lie, or Fnatic, sorry, they want to use the Fizz and Rengar to catch your people. I fear a little bit for Cogmore's life. Wallwhite is going to have to be on his defense, that's for sure. Which team comp do you think will emerge victorious? Tweet hashtag CWWin for the Copenhagen Wolves or hashtag FNCWin for Fnatic to LOL Esports, and of course, we'll see if your champion selectors manage to change your minds at all. 92% of you think yeah. Fnatic will take this one. Don't expect it's going to change too much. So, double teleport for Fnatic here. Mm -hmm. Expect and Fizz in the mid lane to teleport as well. Same thing we've seen over Power yep. and Fnatic did it as well. The last time they played Fizz, get a kill early, and you just split push all game long, and nobody can deal with you. Yeah, and this is a serious problem for them. We'll see how it works out, ladies and gentlemen. Game three about to get underway. The Copenhagen Wolves, they are now into the relegation zone, but the question is, can they take down Fnatic and cause them headaches? Fnatic themselves chasing that number one spot. They have to win every single game, and they need for Copa Alliance to actually lose a couple of games as well. But second place, that's what they really want to make sure they're secure. Get themselves by straight into the semi final, secure themselves a best of five chance at making the world. And remember, while Copenhagen Wolves can make playoffs, they're still playing to secure the number seven spot in the league and therefore a chance to choose yeah. an opponent in the challenge or in the promotion tournament, which is very, very important for the teams here. So Copenhagen Wolves will definitely look to take a win and push Gambit back down towards the bottom of the tables here. But Fnatic for now, looking like they want to go in Get some deep wards. Yeah, we saw, of course, Alliance in the previous matchup going heavy on the aggression in the start. Ward getting cleared out quickly by Fnatic. They're going to get their own wards in there. And the Wolves reacting well. They're going straight in to do their own thing in the red buff area of Wolves. Woolite. Oh, look at down here. Cautious. Behind him, no. 
managed to get away safely. We did actually see a ward from Fnatic on their own red buff before Copenhagen was placed their ward, so they knew, okay, two memes were sent in, they got some deep wards. Of course, they're going to run out fairly soon because it's only the one minute wards we see here. So it's only to spot what's going to happen at level one. On the side of Fnatic, a lot of deep wards, especially the one between the two bottom lane towers, which they love to do to spot where the dual lane from the other team is going. Well, we saw everybody from Fnatic back off. They were actually on top of a ward while they did it, so wards know exactly that it is only these bottom lane pairing of Reckless and Yellow Star here now. Broken Shard starting off on the blue buff. Youngwook will help him out. Did he get the timer right on that one? It looked like he did. Cyanide himself will be taking the red buff. So, different starts for the two here. We'll see if they do both chase around to the opposite numbers. I'm guessing they will just continue standard path for junglers. It should be a very, very standard start. Cyanide moved up to the red buff because he didn't want Copenhagen was in case they had lane swap to then take their own blue buff and go into red. Would have been a risky move in the case Copenhagen could have started his own red buff here, but uh, I think I think they knew Wulad Unlimited was in this bottom lane. They even pinged it earlier. So just standard lane, standard start from junglers. We're going to see double buff. And that's all about the early ganks here. Should definitely be in favor of Broken Shard on this Lee Sin. He can bully out of Rengar if he wants to, even if he wants to go deep inside the jungle and try and find Cyanide. He should be able to either kill him or at least force him away. Well, Soaz was a little delayed in getting to lane in that top, so he may actually fall behind a touch on Young Muck. It seems that he got there just in time for all, all the minions to be taken. Yeah, he's going to get a reward. Oh, no, it looks like he did miss a little wave there. Cyanide's going to be going across. Blue buff, of course, picked up. And Broken Shard, is he going to go for the invade? It looks like he may well do. Let's see here. So Soren is pushing the lane because he knows he has to listen on his team so he can push it up. If Sonnet shows himself in his mid lane, Brogenshaw could be there for counter gank and turn it around, which is why Soren is so, feels so safe and can just push up this lane here and want people to go in and fight against him. Because Kovalev was also strong here in these early levels, also because of Ignite on the side of Soren. If you keep your eye on Cyanide there in that fight, he was... He actually kept hold of that Frosty stack just in case Broken Shard jumps in. He can get that stun and get the hell out of there. Now, of course, he's just taking down the uh, white and he's going to continue his path. So Broken Shard not really creating too much in this opening phases. And he's actually waiting off the side. Remember, cast your minds back to the first game of the day. He did successfully get in there with Rengar at the start, but then it all slide away from him there. He's looking to do the same on Lee Sim, but. Trying to get onto a Fizz this early on is tricky because Playful Trickster will just hop him out of danger. Yeah, and he was also just hoping for Sana to show himself in this mid lane. But of course, Sana has just been saying, yeah, I'm just going to sit and farm. I don't actually care about my lanes at, the point, at this point. They don't really need my help. Oh. And now Brongshot forced to just move away back into his own jungle here. Soren was doing a couple of basic attacks on Peke. And while, yes, he was getting damage on Peke, the entire ranged minion wave was doing the same on Soren. So he was simply baiting. He was not really trading. He was yeah. trying to bait. but He was trying so. to bait, like, say, oh, look me, I'm stupid. I'm taking damage from the minions. Jump me. But it's Peke. He has a lot of experience. Didn't actually bite. Mm -hmm. Cyanide is now coming around this mid lane area. He's just instead going to shove the wave out. I think that looking like they're trying to buy some time, get smites down the uh, cannon minion. Broken Shard is back in this mid lane, but that wave's going to get pushed. And it seems they're going to back away. No, sticking around. What are you doing, Cyanide? So they didn't actually manage to get the wave into the tower, so it didn't reset, and therefore Ooh. Cyanide forced to stay. Now Broken Shard is coming in. That's what he wanted. The Ignite goes down. Broken Shard flashes for oh, it. Doesn't it. get it, though. Now Cyanide's in trouble. He's going to get focused on. He can try and turn this one back around. Peke is safe. Flash was used, though. Yeah, so Cyanide, he was there. They wanted to just push out the wave, so Xpeke could recall, reset the whole lane. Didn't happen, and then Bronx actually came in, forced away the flash, and now put some pressure, but then it's going back to uh, to farming, and this is where teleport is very huge for, for a fist, because in some back to the lane, farming, Rice needs to run from base now. Unlimited taking some poke down in his bottom lane area, they're both hitting level 40 duo lanes, Reckless of course with that explosive shot will clear this wave out fairly quickly. Woolite putting some good trade on Reckless though, he keeps using that vision of the bush to take him away from the basic ranged attack that Woolite has. He again manages to put another bit of damage down. In terms of farm, Woolite has the advantage right now over Reckless. So Fnatic in our was slightly behind here, but Tristana is a very strong laner and we often see Morgana picked into Braum because of a black shield to deny his stun from the passive. And it only works for the Morgana here, but uh, Fnatic is just slightly behind at the moment. Woolite doing a very good job trading with Reckless every single time. Well, I mean, both of them are 
essentially hyper carries, I guess you could say. Peke oh, yeah. getting some poke onto Soren. Both are going to have some incredible long range. Remember, of course, Tristana's range will get longer and longer as she levels up throughout the game. One night, of course, can just hit W and hit you from range from the very beginning. Could definitely be their difference in the lane here early due to the longer range you just mentioned. Therefore, Vula can take the trades, but the E from Tristana really hurts early on. I believe it's like 110 damage at level 1, which is pretty insane for trading. But for now, at least, everyone back to find Brogja once again, around well, his mid lane. He's still on a ward. Peke is well aware, and he's actually yeah. going to bait it out. It this doesn't time. matter. It doesn't matter. It's pressure. Fine pressure. <laughs> pressure. Peke is already that worried, it seems. Chugging down that crystalline flask. Now, of course, Cyanide has come around to counter this one. Blue buff will be spawning shortly, as well with the red for Cyanide. That means we're expecting to see Soren step off to the side. We'll see whether he does get gifted it. Young Buck, meanwhile, in this top lane, up against Soaz. We haven't seen this one a great deal, but Soaz, we've seen him on Lulu many times before, and he's very confident in this lane matchup. Yeah, and just very even. Both of them are very good laners. Look at the champions Ooh, also. The good players, of course. Fight. Good Let's block just as see. Well. Yeah. Nothing happening, yo. Rekt is just trading in to the Shield of Unlimited. Come back and forth. But very nice setup by Yellowstar. And again, tonight just trying to catch up and see us down this bottom lane. So, still no first blood. Just yet, seven minutes gone in this game. Remember, double teleport for Fnatic. We're going to see Soas backing off and buying and teleporting straight back to that top lane. Important to keep a track of those, of course, when that dragon does become available. Soas goes back, gets himself his patented triple Doran's ring and Chalice of Harmony. So we always see this from Soas. Doran's rings, he does the same thing on Gragas. A lot of Doran's rings, so he can control the laning phase or dominate the laning phase, get these early combat stats here and just sit and farm. And he will just keep farming and farming farming. He will stay in his lane, only move around with his teleport, because he doesn't feel the need to make plays on Lulu or Gragas in that case early on. Therefore, just looking to farm, get his Affines, go towards his death cap as the next one. And then again, both these champions, when it comes to team fights, you have a lot of peel on the side of Lulu, where Gragas can set up a fight, but he also has the ability to peel with his own ulti, with his own slows, and therefore keep his AD carry safe. Well, we haven't seen the junglers making too many big plays yet. They've had a little back and forth tit for tat in the mid lane, but that's about it so far. Sinai's going to start off the blue ball form. Peke is going to just jump across and collect that one gratefully. Sinai's showing the blue buff on him. I don't believe he has it, actually. I didn't see him steal it away. No, he hasn't. That's just a, a visual problem. So Sinai doesn't actually have that blue buff on him. So he hasn't, I didn't say, I didn't remember seeing him steal nope. it. Nonetheless, looking to make a play down in this bottom lane. No sign of Broken Shard. Teleport used for Peke in the mid lane, so he's not going to get involved. Instead, he'll just keep clearing that wave. So we often see this with Ringer. Once you hit level 6, you go bot lane. Because your support often brings some CC, and if he lands, if Yellowstar lands a binding or gets a stun onto either Unlimited or Blue Light, Sana can join in. They should be able Here to pick go. up kill. He's going in. He's going towards it. Blue Light's not backing out. There's going to be Soul Shackles used from Yellowstar. Good. Oh, that's a let down. Play. That was actually Yellowstar going too early, honestly, I feel. Soul Shackles immediately, immediately used. Blue Light just flashed. He's like, I know what's yeah, coming. I'm getting the hell out of there. It is so hard to set it up because you know they have flash, and if you flash towards them, it's not like they're going to stay and say, yeah, I'm just going to get stunned. You know they flash away instantly. Either, either you land the binding or Ringer jumps in with the stun first or the root first. So what's up in his top lane, though? So Big he's trouble. in trouble. Oh, he read the situation well, though. Immediately runs towards the river. He's got Peke in support. Glitterlands lands on Broken Shard. Where's Soaz going to go here? Peke's going to come around the side at the moment, but Soaz still in trouble. Not too sure how he's going to be able to get away. He's still well, go news. Shield comes down. Yes, another. No! Gets towards him. Flash knows too early. Too early. No! Oh, the no! Kick. I don't believe it. Broken Shard's <laughs> kick has given him the chance to escape. And he gets away. No way, man. They chased him for such a long time. They both flashed after him. And then the very end, he shields himself just as Brogja kicks him. And the damn Frenchman stays alive. Well, good escape from Soaz. Now Peke going to get focused. It's on the waters thrown out towards Soren. Has to get away. No flash available for him, remember. Cyanide simply comes in to part the seas and stop the wolves crashing against them once again. Yellowstar caught out. Broken Shot could follow that one. Get some damage down on the support instead, he'll be forced away. The Wolves at the moment, they're the ones creating the pressure. It is, but you have Lee Sin, you need to make or create the pressure early game here while Ringo is still farming, still farming. Of course, Sinet is at the point of the game where he can start ganking, but it's up to Broken Shot to make plays, make sure his lanes get ahead. Soren in his mid lane has actually been farming really well on this rise, also because of 
Broken Shot being in the mid lane twice now, forcing Xpeck back to base. So overall, if you just look at the rise, also the fact he got a very early tier here, started to stack it up, should get a rod of ages the next time he goes back to base as well. So it's looking good for, for Soren in the mid lane, at least. So far, so good for the Walls who are chasing victories. And one victory would prevent Gambit from getting that seventh place spot, I believe. So as, of course, putting the damage back onto his Jung Book. Will I go aggressive on Reckless here? Knew that he was on his own. Goes straight in towards his face and tries to put a good bit of trade down on him. Yalistar now back in lane. And did go towards that Frost Queen or Frost Fang as it's referred to. Yellowstar, can he land this Dark Binding this time around? Sino bounces in. This time they catch on towards him. First foot will be coming. The question is who will get it? Will it goes down? It's Yellowstar that picks it up. Cathy in surprise, just bouncing around. Actually didn't even go towards Reckless. Reckless had Rocket Jump available if he needed to. So now we can go all the way back to the very first gank where Yellowstar traded his flash with Moolite. And we're saying, oh, it wasn't a really good setup here. It didn't work for them. They didn't manage to lock him down. Simply meant, next time Sarnath had ulti, he could return to this bottom lane. There was no flash on Woolite, and now he could make the engage, lock him down, and set up an easy binding or stun from Yellowstar and get a kill here. Let's see if they actually want to start the dragon. Seems like Reckless is going to go back to base because he's still fairly low, and Woolite was on his way. So I decided not to take the chance and just go back to base. Yeah, I think they realized that was too much of a risky play. There was two members that were low on hit points, so... They didn't go for the Dragon. Probably wise choice, honestly, from Fnatic. So, First Blood picked up nonetheless for Yellowstar. Broken Shard is going to take the blue buff, giving across to Soren. Soren will give that one across. Peke building up towards Lichbrain. I thought he was just about to smoke it out. There. I was like, what are you doing? Uh, so as he's continuing the pressure on this top turret, and actually starting to cause some serious problems for Youngbug. Joey's Desperately trying to clear this wave out, but so as, as we just saw, giving them the merry dance, again has Broken Shard paying them a visit. And uh, the range here from Soas means he can just auto attack the minions and clear them very fast while Youngbug only clears with his, uh, with his Q. Doesn't really want to get in too close and want to take the damage. Well, let's see here. Broken Shard onto the ward. Soas should be able to move away fairly easily. Yeah, spotted in there already and starts to move away. Should be safe. He's got wild growth. Should he require it instead, just put some damage traded back on towards him. Now the Cyanide's coming in. He has got ultimate available. They may try and bait something out here. You can see Soas already going aggressive. Broken Shard will pass by the ward. So Soas knows he's safe and will just interrupt Youngbook's teleport. And just keep pushing in the lane here. Keep getting some damage on the tower, which means if Youngbook ever teleports away from the top lane, the tower will go down. So it's a trade he needs to be ready to take in case he wants to like TP on the ward behind Reckless and Yellowstar down this bottom side here to set up a kill. So it's actually just recalled, so now might be the time to do it. There's still a ward behind Reckless. Let's see if he wants to do it or not. Let's see whether he goes in. I don't look like it. Peke though is waiting in the mid lane. Are we gonna see the ultimate coming out? Cyanide, yes we are. He's pouncing in towards Soren, jumps on towards him, has got that stun, there it is. He has to manage to use the rune. Prison chum, the walls oh, will prison. not land, teleports, Sinai goes down, Soren tries to turn this one around, Peke gets on towards him, Yulkbuk teleports in, not quick enough though, got the kill, it was a trade, mid laner for jungle. Yes, Erlen, they didn't expect Soren to actually stay alive here, therefore there was no instant teleport from Yombok. he still managed to get a kill because Peke actually missed his ult, so didn't get the damage from it to finish him. So one on one trade for Copenhagen Wolves, he did however use the teleport, Soas Still has his own teleport. Same goes for Xpeke in his mid lane, which could mean the Dragon will go in favor of Fnatic if they set it up correctly. As soon as Yombok shows himself in the top lane, they can move towards the Dragon and just be five versus four. So, Soaz putting some damage back on towards this Tom. Has got that. Athene's now completed. Rod of Ages was also completed by Youngbug, who is honestly having problems defending this turret right now. Tries to get the belly slam on towards Soaz. Gets a big trade down on towards him. Works out well for him. Soaz, though, is safe, as I mentioned, still holding that wild growth and the shield in his pocket. Cyanide taking the blue buff away here this time around. Peke not wanting it. Classic solo queue move after your mid laner makes you die in the mid lane. You just take the blue buff. Don't even give him a chance here. But of course not the case for Cyanide. It was because there's already a blue buff on X Peke here on the fist. So he didn't actually need it. Because Soren killed Cyanide, got the double buff, and then he actually killed Soren after. So it's a buff transfer. Well played by Fnatic. And now on towards the dragon here. We just talked about how there's no teleport on Youngbok, so he won't be able to join. It should be a dragon for Fnatic. Oh, that's going to be Fnatic's dragon, as you mentioned. First one of the game. 
and very much for free. Woolite and Unlimited coming up to just take a simple pass and a look and get the oh, timer down. Oh, oh, nearly got the steal. Now they're in trouble. Soul Shackles goes down. That's going to stun both of them. Reckless jumps in towards it. Cyanide pounces in, and that is Woolite going down. A little bit reckless themselves, Fnatic. All taken low. Soas comes around the side there. Five members of Fnatic as Unlimited is pounced on by Peke off the side there. He drops down. And now Broken Shot follows through. Gets the kill on Reckless. Soren actually catching on towards them. A good point out, of course, that's Reckless' second death in the four games. Oh, playing against the Soaz. Wolves. Soas uses the wild growth. Broken Shot's going to continue chasing. Not a lot of mana on Soas, actually. But he will get away once again. Meanwhile, in the top lane here, Youngbo pushing in because two members from Fnatic used the teleport, or sorry, Soas used the teleport from the top lane to join in for the fight here. But very risky play by Wulad and Unlimited, moving up, trying to steal the dragon to set up for an, a nice binding into a stun from Yellowstar, and they got another kill onto Wulad here in the early game, and even better for Fnatic, onto Reckless. Two kills now. Mm -hmm. Peke heading towards the top here. Let's see whether anyone else joins him. Young Buck, of course, was there, gets pounced on and turned around. Chum the Waters is not available. Peke just no trying either. to trade on Young Buck here. Could keep him busy. Instead, we'll clear out that minion wave. And it seems we're going to have a split push change around, but that's left this mid turret fairly exposed. And Soren and Broken Shard will get a good chunk of damage down on it. Let's see here. Sarnite and Alti, not really looking for a fight either. So up in his top lane here, Xpeke actually managed to force Jumbug away, despite having no ulti, no flash at the point. A nice deep ward though. We talked uh, earlier, very first game of the day, about how do you ward against the Rengar. Well, you get some deep wards and then the enemy support clears it and you get really annoyed. But yeah, you need some deep wards in the jungle, so you spot him before he actually activates his ulti stealth. And therefore you will be able to back away as soon as you see him move towards you. Looks like the Stanic Shiv is going to be the second item for Reckless. Has completed that Infinity Edge. Wallite, of course, with the Triforce now also completed. Going to go at those Berserker Greaves out shortly. Unlimited again, trying to get some Ward Vision in there. This time around, it may cost him his life. Soul Shackles going down on Unlimited. Reckless will continue through. Pounces on towards him. Unlimited all sorts of trouble. Will he go down? Yes, he will. And now Reckless stunned out. Wallite now in trouble. Yellowstar's going to catch on towards him. We will have the Dark Binding in a moment. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Chum the Waters on Soren. Sinai's taking all of the damage. This time, he's got enough hit points. Oh, Wallite well, flashes away. Just about gets clean away. Yellowstar's going to continue pushing through. He's all on his own here actually. <laughs> Not sure where Yellowstar's going, but he bluffs his way forward and pushes him away. So Unlimited really wanted to get the deep ward in here, but Yellowstar, he stayed, landed the binding, it was an easy kill for Fnatic, and then the mid lane, they managed to do it properly this time between Sanat and Xpeka though. We're just gonna see down this uh, fight once again. Woolite taking a lot of damage, dodging around to see Yellowstar, lands the binding, they're still flashing Woolite, remember. Now Brogja joining in, so he's just gonna flash away. Sadly, didn't get a kill on the side of Copenhagen Wolves. Meanwhile, Soren died in the mid lane. So, Reckless now, of course, cleaning up, gets that first turret of the game for Fnatic. And so as back in the top wave, having to defend this young buck who, who was under pressure for so long, yet managed to steal away that turret. So as may continue the aggression here, good glitter lance on young buck. Of course, that tower defense is in the way, so young buck will be safe for now. And we really see Fnatic, if you look at the items, just full focus on small fights. Picking people off here. We have Cutlass completed for Cyanide. Broken Shot earlier today, he built full tank on Ringer. This time around, we get some damage on Cyanide, so he can now pick people off here or slow them down so that someone else from Fnatic can join in. We see on Fizz, early DFG as well. So just full focus, find the target, instantly blow them up. We don't even need team fights, or Fnatic doesn't even need team fights here. It's all about just picking Copenhagen Wolves off. Well, it's something Fnatic do well. They're all about that pick comp and getting objectives afterwards. The Wolves themselves want an objective right now. They're starting to pressure for the mid lane turret. Four members, five members now making their way up the mid. Fnatic there in force though. Peke roaming around the side. He's going to split push. He's going for the tower. Nobody's anywhere near this from the Wolves. Now, there's Teleport and Youngbug, but he moves up to the mid lane. So five members from Copenhagen Wolves want to push this mid lane. They have to take the tower and either go back and defend the side lanes or push even further up here. But they have to be very fast. Well, it's a mid turret going down. The Wolves have gone towards that one. Slams down towards Soas. Disavends himself with his wild growth. Cyanide pounces in simply to stop the AD carry. Buy in time. Teleport Rick was used. Behind. Here comes Chum the Waters. Catches on towards Youngbug. He goes over the 
outside there. Reckless comes around the side. That's going to be one down. Woolite is dropped. Soul Shackles used. Youngberg's going to get locked up with the stun there. Yellow Star comes around the side. Pekka gets himself a second kill. Broken Shot being chased down. Reckless should have pounds back available in a moment. Broken Shot trying to use the walls to get himself some safe distance, but instead Reckless will be able to find him. Another shot comes through as he tries to chase him. Where are you going, Broken Shot? <laughs> well, Simply buying time for the team. Is it going to be enough? I think he's safe. I think he should be a no neutral kill. No, not yet. No, not quite. Just a few more seconds here. So, Reckless would probably have just jumped towards him and hit him here. But so, Fnatic, they actually split out in the side lanes. Cobling also like, we can't really deal with you one on one. So, we're just going to group five mid and force your teleports to be used. They did force the teleports to get the mid tower. However, because Cobling was managed to flank around, oh, sorry, Fnatic managed to flank around them. There was a good ulti from Fizz as well. The Wolves simply just dropped dead, and they are behind in gold here, and there's a lot of damage on the side of Fnatic, so it's hard for Copenhagen Wolves to actually teamfight just yet. They need more time, especially for Sorin to scale up. Well, Dragon's available, everybody moves in towards it. Teleport is up for Soaz if he should require. Reckless now with that static shift completed, starts off the Dragon. Yellow Star finds the Dark Binding, lands it on towards Unlimited. The Wolves moving in so many times. They've lost games on these Dragon calls. Can they make the right one this time? I think the right move is to back the hell out. Well, for now, at least a stalling Fnatic moving their way. However, the top lane, Source is going to take a tower, so it's actually in favor of Fnatic. The fact that all five members from Cobra and Wolves are here, he can even TP in if he wants to join for the fight. Let's see. If Fnatic actually want to contest this dragon. Well, so as he's pushing, teleports coming in. Where is he going? Just off the back there is a long way out, actually. That dragon may go down before they get close enough, but they're all caught out. Yellow Star goes in. Five man Soul Shackle comes out and will proc on every single member. The walls back out because Warlight managed to take down Cyanide. Broken Shard drops in. So as the gets on towards him, Yellow Star picks up the kill for that one. Becky slides on through, takes down Soren across the side. Warlight now caught in the pit all alone. Where's he going to go? Where's he Gonna hide. Nowhere. Nowhere, that's for sure. Reckless jumps on through, gets the reset, pounces back on towards Youngbuk. Youngbuk may get away from this one, no. Peke dives Ooh. in. Oh, the minions have got him. The minions are on him. No, oh, Reckless saves the day. Gets on towards the minions and stops them killing Peke off there. Wow, just a good turnaround. It was a three for one, but I think the walls got dragon. I believe they did actually. Broken Shardy got the dragon here, but they were just stuck in the dragon. We noticed all five members. So Sanad, he's gonna jump in. He's gonna get the Wild Grove while Yellow Star follows up. So they knock up the members. They get the Soul Shackles onto them. And Reckless in the background is just hammering away onto them, doing so much damage. It's a very good ult by Youngbok, however, to actually force the flash away from Reckless. But then Copenhagen Wolves, they feel like they can keep chasing. There's still Kord. In this Dragon Pit here, they can't really move out, so every single time one member just peeks, looks outside of the pit, Fnatic jumps him and kills him. Bullard in the very end, sadly for him, didn't even manage to escape, and then Youngbuck almost managed to kill Expect. He just smacks him in the head. Book. Not enough, however. Those minions. That, I think it was the, the pot, is the combination of chugging him down those health pots. Minions almost taking him down, but nonetheless, it's Fnatic that come out ahead again. 5 1 3 for Peke, 5 1 4 for Reckless. Their incredible stance against the Copenhagen Wolves continue to shine. Meanwhile, Yellowstar, of course, he's happy right now at 2 0 7, getting the Age of the Legion completed. So, Peke. Still on award, they know he's there. He's gonna try and be sneaky, and this is what Fnatic try and do all the time. Try and make a little pick, but Peke may get singled out here. Well, he actually wants Copenhagen Wolves to move down and try and kill him and then escape. He does have teleport if he actually gets if he spots the moving down, he can teleport away. Otherwise, we know how hard it is to catch your fist. While Fnatic then just keep reckless to sit in the mid lane and farm, push the lane down all the time. You have Lulu up in the top lane doing the same thing. So if Copenhagen will send two members to this bottom lane to deal with Rick, uh, to deal with a fist. Well, it opens up one of the other lanes to just lose the tower, maybe even the Baron, if too many members from Copenhagen Wolves go down to the spot side. Because we talked about how if a teleport fist gets a few early kills, or we actually just had one early kill, he becomes very hard to deal with in a split push. Now he has five. He has a DFG as well. So whoever actually wants to face him might be in big trouble. So Lich Bane or Azonia is next. He's deciding which. Cyanide, though, will be joining him. And the buddy system that Fnatic so often run when they're looking for kills is about to be in effect. Soren is around the side there. He's got unlimited nearby. Popped in. Cyanide pops the stealth. He's going to be getting too close to the tower. He will get spotted. That's not going to work out. That ultimate's wasted. 
There is three members pushing the mid lane though, and Joey Youngbuck is not with them. Instead, he tries to come around the side. Broken Shard will defend that one. This is the one good thing for the Wolves. They have good, good wave clear. Cyanide stood on a wall trying to take the bread buff. That's not going to work out. He goes down. And the curse of Rengar in Europe continues. And even better for the Copenhagen Wolves to have some wards in their own jungle so they can see Fnatic move between the lanes and Cyanide all alone doing the red buff. Caught out of position. Easy kill for Copenhagen Wolves. And they're actually moving towards Baron here. Yeah. Let's see if they just want to force the teleport from expect or if they actually want to start it. The thing is, they know they're going to make a big, bold play right now. So as is continuing to push that mid lane, teleport, teleport comes in. That is going to be Peke coming from the base, and they're peeling straight out of there. It was a bold choice from the Wolves and a wise move to back out. Yeah, it was 100% just to force the teleport. They need to go back to this mid lane, however, otherwise tower is gone. Yeah, no, they're sticking around on this Baron Pit area. I'm not sure this is the play they want. So as in Reckless, they're still pushing through. They're going to be on the inhibitor to it. Now Fnatic are going to actually delay them off the side there. Look at the damage. They're just churning down this tower. It's going to be half the hit points gone before Youngbook gets close to this one. And Fnatic, once again, tactical prowess. They always manage to make the right move. And the Copenhagen was because they are behind already. Wanted to try and make a move here. At least force a summoner teleport from Fnatic. Should just have been a bit faster to actually moving back to the mid lane again. So they didn't have to give up an easy tower and also lose 50% of the HP on the inhibitor turret. Will, of course, get some of the HP back. But let's see here. Dragon in one minute, 15 seconds. Fnatic in control of the game. Both their carries, or the late game hyper carries, are extremely formed and fit at this point. So they can be very happy. Will, I did get two kills. So at least has the blade. Also need a lot of time before he can catch up. I'm just not sure whether he's got the protection. That's the problem for him. Right now, of course, we see a bloodthirster beam completed almost by Reckless. Just a little bit shy on the gold on that one. Zonya's hourglass was also completed by Peke. So as in the top lane, he's been going fairly unheard of. He's quietly going about his business. 005 Dragon now up in 30 seconds, and the wall's actually trying to. Get into positional advantage here, maybe trying to sweep around the side of Fnatic, but while this is all happening, Fnatic are clearing out the Baron pit, and so as continues to push that top wave down, Fnatic are actually in position around the Baron. Wolves were a little concerned, I think. I don't think Fnatic had any thoughts of going for Baron themselves, but this could be a bit of a trade. Look at Wolves, they're pushing up the mid. They want a pace race here. Let's see. Uh oh. Oh, Fnatic is already at the tower. This is a risky, risky move, but they're going for it. They're going to tank through this turret here. You can see straight away, base race is on. Fnatic pushing in towards the inhib. Wolves have to back away from this one. Yeah, they're trying to take it out. Instead, they're going to lose the inhib turret to before they get close enough. They've got to make themselves count. They're not even going to get the inner turret. The Fnatic continues to push on through. The inhibitor will go down, and the Wolves completely made a mistake. Like there. And that was a complete letdown here. This is all hyped up about the base race, and it's actually Copenhagen who's oh, pushing up, this. recalling. And let's see, they do have uh, Wool Light to try and spot if someone is waiting here, but inhibits are gone now. The base is open. And you already have issues dealing with the split push from Fnatic. Uh, it's gonna get even worse. Oh, oh messy time. Walleye caught out, pounced on there. Peke has to hit the Zonyas early on though. He tries to get away. Is he gonna be taken down? He will. The explosive cast comes in. Reckless took down Unlimited, and that's a mid lane down though. And Fnatic, they have to back off. So trading one for one here. Went very deep. Instantly expect had to pop out last. And as soon as he came out, Copenhagen was managed to kill him at least here. So we did see some of the team fight potential from this lineup the Wolves have. If you get caught, by a room present from Soren, there's a lot of damage to take you down here. And as long as they can protect Woolite, they will be able to, to fight. Maybe not straight up 5v5 in an open area because Fnatic are so far ahead, but it's at least what their comp can do. Well, we know Woolite and Co are not afraid to fight. Now they're moving in towards the Dragon. They should secure this one. Fnatic are sticking around. Look at Cyanide. He wants to get involved in this one. He wants the smite, but it's not going to happen. Broken Shard will take that one down. It was actually Woolite that finished it off. And again, Youngbook this time can slam his way out of the pit. Soren tries to sidestep, gets caught with that Pix and Glitter Lance. The rest of Fnatic, look at them. They're charging up the mid lane. They're going for Baron, I feel. Well, let's see here. The two members just recalled. No teleport on because it's the jungler and the mid laner. So we'll be able to start it at least or clear it. They're pinging it. Pinged it. 
didn't start just to see it. Kome was moving in. The super minions, remember, in that top wave. They're going to lose a Nexus oh, to it. Yes. Wolves have to push for this one, but that Nexus to it may well go down. And Limited tries to come around the side. Good delay Jump tactic needs to go back. Fnatic is simply delaying it. All they want to do is keep them busy. Now you can see Broken Shard, he's already heading back there. He's not the man you should be leaving out of the Baron fight. They're sending Youngbok back here to actually clear because he has teleport, but Fnatic can just start it again. Force him to teleport out to... Nexus 2 is going. Sure. It's gone. Nexus 2, it goes down. The super minions and Fnatic delayed exactly what they wanted to do. Sinai chases on. Stealth is on him. Pounces in there. Tries to get on towards Sorin, but he'll be happy with the support. And the let Sinai take him low. Wild Growth should keep him alive. Now teleport. Peke has been singled out. He's off on the side here. Youngbuck comes in. The rest of Unlimited tries to chase on towards him. Broken Shard locks in towards him. Reckless caught out. Has to leap away. Just about gets the safety. So has not quite caught out by the Sonic Wave. Unlimited chase through, knocks on towards Yellowstar, he's been focused down, he will go down, Soul Shackles will not get procced off there in time, Peke comes around the side, Broken Shard picked off, Peke now, jump the waters on Unlimited, he gets bounced on the side, Peke running interference, tries to jump across, Sonya's Hourglass will be out of play for Drinks to away, slides back in, Reckless with the knockback, but Peke goes down, and a two for one trade, this time for the Wolves, the Super Minions are just about being dealt with in the base of the Wolves by the Minions. So good trade here by Copenhagen Wolves to send Send back Yombok to deal with all the super minions, only lost one tower. And then Fnatic were actually looking to fight here, but then a very good TP back from Yombok. They got a few kills here, got some gold, and now let's see. Fnatic once again moving towards this dragon. Oh, Baron, sorry. And another inner turret goes down. Final one of the game for Fnatic as they continue to play the map rather than the champion fights. Fnatic have themselves positional advantage. Pink Ward was placed by the walls, but that's going to get cleaned out no problem. And the Baron started. There's no there. It's only three members from Fnatic. Still taking them very fast. Yombo is going to be the first one to come in here. Let's see what he can do. They're going to come around the side. Joey has his He's explosive gas available. Goes for it. So it takes a big chunk of damage early on there. Explosive gas forces him so, so low. They have to back out. Jump the waters comes out. One line trouble. Just gets popped from zero. Reckless now. He's focused. Yombo's going to get caught out. And Young Kane Reckless has to pounce away. And another risky, risky Baron play is stopped by the Wolves. And again, they trade one for one now. Covering will start to burn themselves. Source is very low. He does have teleport, however. He will join in again. Reckless is life stealing off the red buff right now off the side. He's going to be looking to go in towards this one. Baron, so, so low, but the Wolves are tanking this one through. Super minions are taking down the inhibitor. Meanwhile, in the top there, Wolves is coming around the side. Yellowstar, Soul Shackle is available. Comes back in. Another five man Soul Shackle comes down from Yellowstar. Catches on towards them. Soren is the only man around the side. Broken shot. Passed away. Reckless leaps back in. Gets the reset. Goes back in. Soren in trouble. He he goes down, it's an eight for Fnatic and the Baron this time around. The minions are doing the job for them in the base. There's the inhibitor drops. Fnatic get everything from that fight. So Copenhagen Wolves have actually managed to go even in the last team fights, and yet they felt like they have to go straight for Baron, even though there was a teleport on Source. It was a very, very risky move. Completely backfired for them. And they've been doing a good job in these fights. They concentrate one for one, two for two, and yet they felt like they had to go for Baron here. Well, that's Fnatic moving in towards the base now. Wallite, you can see one shot from Reckless. He fancies tanking this one up. He's got a gigantic shield from that Bloodthirster. Managed to tank it the entire way through now, of course, along with the shield that he gets from Soaz. The Nexus to it's getting blocked off. And Limited will finally be able to prevent that one. Becker got out. He's going to go down. Oh, oh the, for Trickster. the tower's not on him yet. No. Got him. Broken Shot comes in and takes him down. That was a Baron buff, remember, on Peke. The Wolves in desperation mode. They're going to try and chase down Reckless, but you can't catch to Tristana, he can just pounce away from this one. No way he's going to get close enough on this. The damage from Woolite may be enough as he flashes through into the pit. Unlimited will not follow through. And Wolves need to go back to defending their base. Not for want of making action, that's for sure, the Wolves, but sometimes it's just not the right call. It is just this very aggressive Copenhagen Wolves play style. They always look to make a big play. And it often backfires. Again, the Baron here, they went one for one, they forced Swords back, they stopped it, could have gone back to their own base, farmed up a little bit more, reset the whole game, but went straight for Baron. Got punished again, died, lost the last Nexus turret, lost the Baron as well. But I really have to give them credit for playing some entertaining games, because constant team fighting here, over and over, both teams as well. Fnatic's been looking for the fights. Let's see, they're pushing down his mid lane now. Copenhagen was a recon from his bottom side. We might actually get a straight up five versus five team fight, which has gone pretty even in the last few games, or last few uh, times.
Remember this game is pretty big in the standings for both teams. Fnatic, of course, chasing down first place. They currently have second. They want to make sure that is secured. The Wolves, meanwhile, they're only on seven wins, 18 losses. This will put them to 19 losses if they were to lose this. Gambit are on six wins, nine losses. They're only one game behind, and they are even in their head-to-head. -head. It is a big week for a lot of teams involved in this one. Fnatic themselves, well, they're going to have to go pretty big to chase down Alliance. They have to win all four of those matches. So. Securing second place is absolutely their main aim right now. It does look pretty good. Still about 10,000 gold lead. They have the inhibitor down. The Nexus is open. First, they want to take a dragon. So now, slowing down a little bit. We've seen a lot of action in the last 10, 15 minutes. A lot of back and forth for dragons and towers and baron. Now, for now, they just take it easy. Take the dragon here. They can go back to what they did earlier and just split push. There's no teleport, however, on Fist just yet. As soon as it's up, though, they can split up in the lanes, follow down the super minions in one lane, and therefore force Cobrang will to send someone back to defend both super minions and a champion, and then also use the teleport to set up plays. They are pushing down all the lanes now, forcing Cobrang and Wolves in to defend multiple lanes at once, and therefore open up for Rectus to hit the tower. Well, Cyanide's waiting to see if anyone was going to face check and try and get some last minute ward coverage doesn't look like Copenhagen Wolves are going to do that instead bottom wave is going to get cleared out Peke will go down and wipe that one out remember he's already shoved the wave in towards that inhibitor turret super minions still pushing in the top wave as well Youngbuck did put pressure on that one so as it's going to go off and deal with that wave which will actually pretty much push itself in and that's going to cause pressure I think the bottom turret is one they're mainly going to focus on they're trying to cause some problems in this mid lane or so as makes Somebody have to deal with that top wave now. Peke, oh, good urgent strike, dodges out of the damage from Youngblood. Again, Unlimited, defending his uh, good body to the tower every single time he has the chance. Up with the shield, blocks all the attacks from Reckless. Expected though, finally down his bottom lane, looking to push onto the tower. Just get in with your Lich Bane, hit it once, move away, do it the next time, slowly get it down here. It's very hard for Fnatic to actually break into the base of Copenhagen Walls even though they have super minions spawning. Because you don't really want to dive as well onto something like a Ryze. If he locks you down there, you can't really kill him under the tower. He's going to destroy you. So inhibitors spawn in this top wave. That should be the next focus for Fnatic. You can still see they're split pushing off the side there. They have warded and cleared vision from the walls. As everybody from Fnatic moves around there, we do still see Peke. He's keeping Youngbook busy down the bottom wave. Let's see if they fancy this fight, though. As you mentioned, it's been actually fairly even in trades, honestly, the last few fights, despite the big advantage that Fnatic have oh, over Cyanide going Here in. we go, Cyanide, it's Woolite, he wants to fight. It's Woolite. It's Woolite he's going to go for, has to run straight <laughs> out. It's like, bouncing, <laughs> run away, run away, Peke in trouble, caught out, Yellowstar stunned up as well, he's going to get taken, no, broken shot going way too deep on that one, safeguard straight back out to safety, unlimited caught out, Chum the wall is kind of popped, but still not enough damage done, the Wolves may be chasing this one. Yeah, again, these team fights are so even, Cyanide, he tried to engage in real life, the rest of his team couldn't follow him. He got too far in the base of Copenhagen Wolves and backed away. Wolves have to deal with Peke. He's trying to push back in the side there. They realized it. They were chasing out on the rest of Fnatic. It's bought him time. He's going to get some quick Lich Bane hits on towards it. Playful Tricksters away. And buys the rest of his team time to back off and regenerate that hit points. They still very tight fights. The Wolves, they're not afraid to brawl. Definitely not. It's what their comp is really good at. It's what we talk about how Copenhagen was they want to just team fight. Fnatic, they want to split push, they want to pick people off. And it's hard to do it once you're all the way down to the base. Sure, you have the lead, you apply the pressure, but actually getting in and just single out a target in the base of the enemy team is so hard to do, which is why Fnatic have some issues at the moment. They can just take it easy now for 50 seconds, wait for the Baron, get some good wards, and then bait Copenhagen Wolves to move towards the Baron or just take it and go back to do the same thing, but this time they have the Baron buff to help them, and then they should be able to get a, a tower or get the top inhibitor, and once again, push every single lane. So now they're just waiting for Baron to spawn. We're gonna get some wards. I wonder if Copenhagen Wolves actually wants to fight, or if they're just gonna stay back in base and say, we don't care about your Baron buff. We have shown we can hold you off already. I'm not sure. They managed to clear every wave up, so they should be neutral, so they don't need to worry about minions pushing into their base this time around. That's what Fnatic have been working well over the last few times. So in their stead, 
It could be a straight up fight. Yellow Star has managed to land that Soul Shackles perfectly. Every team fight so far, catching them out in some enclosed corner. Reckless stood on a ward while the rest of his team, look at this, they're trying to rotate around. They're trying to sneak straight in towards that inhibitor. They're moving forward here, both Sonic and Xpeck here. Copenhagen also reacting this time. They're not staying in the mid lane, instantly moving back to make sure. Actually, they still need to send some guy in to stop him now. Fnatic back to the Baron. Yeah, the ward actually spotted them oh, stepping Peke. away. Peke, Solon thought about it. Popped his ult. He did try and pop his ult, yeah. He tried to go for it there. Now it's not going to be available by the time he gets in towards his pit. Instead, Fnatic now forced away from the Baron once again. Soren can't get close enough. That ultimate's on a pretty quick cooldown, though. Peke taking some damage from Youngbuck, who himself throws out the barrels. Youngbuck separated, oh. actually. He's in trouble. He's going to have to belly slam away. Or will he just go straight for the fight? Flashes across the side there. Instead, that's going to be unlimited. He takes all of the damage. Warlight is on the back line. He does not want to be there. Backs away from this one. The Wolves this time taking a lot of punishment and quick retrieval. A quick. Oh, Sonia's Atlas comes out. I don't think they're going to buy him enough time. Youngbuck goes down as Peke leaps on over. Chop the wall. He's not going to land on Warlight. But Reckless chased on through. It's a straight up brawl. Has he got enough? Yes. Tower hit comes through. Reckless oh, goes don't. down as well. It's a trade between the AD carries and the Copenhagen Wolves. Despite three members remaining, they may be able to hold on this inhibitor turret. The lack of the AD carry could be enough to force Fnatic back. Let's see here. Teleport used by Xpeggy. Wants to join in. They want to get this inhibitor here so they can go back to Baron. Traded two for one just before. Moving straight forward. 30 second death time is still on Youngbuck. We can see the everything being thrown at this one. They want the inhibitor turret going down. Soren it. not able to get in there. This is going to be the inhib down. Now they're going to pop the ultimate. They're going to go in wild. Go use on cyanide. They're going to bounce them around there. A quick jump. The water slice on through. Unlimited going to get caught out. Get stunned up by cyanide. He goes down. Fnatic are pushing on through. They can take the game. The Nexus turrets are all gone. Broken shot. The last man Triple remaining. Kill. Youngbuck's not up for 10 more seconds. And Fnatic will take victory. A well fought victory. That's for sure. The Wolves Push them all away. But nonetheless, it's the first one for the Super Week. And the Copenhagen Wolves really tried to do whatever they could. They were very far behind, lost all the towers. It was all about the base. And they just kept defending it. 10, 15 minutes, walked up to Baron here. But once again, we have to look at some of the, the decisions from the Copenhagen Wolves. They have so many good plays, so many aggressive plays. But often, they have this one over-aggressive one where they give a massive advantage over to your other team. Now, one thing's for sure, the Copenhagen Wolves gave them a good run for their money there. But Fnatic take them down. That's a 4-0 clean sweep that the Fnatic have over the Wolves this season. Superb stuff for them. Fnatic, of course, move, continue to stay in second place. And now 17 wins, 8 losses. Meanwhile, the Wolves are now on 7-19. and 19. Just one game behind them, Gambit, now. They are closing in on that seventh place. It's a risky, risky business for both Gambit and Wolves down that bottom of the table. But it does mean this Super Week is very exciting because yeah. we have all these small fights in the standing here. Up in the top, Fnatic against the Lions. The middle, well, of course, you can also say Subaku and Millennium are chasing Fnatic, but at the middle, we have the four teams, SK, Millennium, Subaku and Rocket. And then the bottom as well. Even the fight now between Gambit and Cobra and Wolves. So every single game really matters. Because they're all playing for seedings or the option to choose an opponent. A risky, risky game though for Fnatic there. And not exactly a clean one for both the no. two top teams. You know, looking at Alliance versus Rocket, they were behind for the majority of it. Fnatic were certainly not in control of that game. I think it's safe to say Wolves definitely caused them a few problems. Yeah, so they had a very good start. Got a lot of kills onto both Reckless and Xpeka here. We saw the split pushing with the Fist. It worked really well until they got down to the base of Copenhagen Wolves. And then Fnatic kept trying to bait up Baron. The Wolves came up, stopped them from doing it over and over, bought some time. But also the base race, or the base race, where <laughs> Copenhagen Wolves Almost. walked up the mid lane, started recalling and already lost inhibitor, was very weird. And it opened up for Fnatic to do the Baron dance. And even though Copenhagen Wolves got a few kills, actually managed to punish Fnatic from doing it, they didn't manage to get anything from it because the base was open, because they lost their own Nexus turret. So they actually ended up losing mainly from the fact they did the base race, and then because they gave up so many kills to the two carries from Fnatic early on. It's a little strange in that base race that they almost had, that Warlight didn't stay and just get that extra couple of yeah. hits before going back, because the tower was already gone, the inhibitor was almost certainly going to go before they even got back. So it's, uh, it's one of the situations where 
you feel like you have a great idea, you just scream, hey, we can pay space, we go for it, we go for it. And you just need one guy to say, guys, no, 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 it's not working and at it all. And it down in everyone's yeah. mind. And everyone's yeah. like, wait, what's going on? Are we going back? Are we staying here? And in the end, everyone is probably just yelling, oh, we can't do this. Back, like, back, 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 now it's yeah. too late. Back, back, back. And everyone starts recalling. Nobody even finished a tower. And you end up just completely lose the base race. Well, fantastic stuff, fantastic game so far in Super Week. We're going to go over to Shox and Trevor, who are now ready with a post-match breakdown of that game alongside Reckless. Thank you very much, Demon. First off, congratulations to uh, Reckless. Let's take a look at picks and bans and see you going back to Tristana, a champion you loved so much back in the challenger scene. So why did you decide to go for her here? Um, lately, Tristana has got some more popularity across the League of Legends scene, like even in Korea and stuff. So. And I really feel personally that she's one of these champions that rise with the new patch where these attack speed items got buffed. So lately I've been practicing her a lot and I really like her against these split up teams because they have this composition where they had like Gragas Braum and they could just split us up all the time. And having someone with no escape is really risky. So we kind of saw it coming and went for the Tristan early on. Obviously, you had the escape. You did die twice in this game. That means you now have 26 deaths in this split, which is actually almost a record. Meteor's over and A has the tightest record for deaths. He only has 29 in one split, so you can only die three times. Um, what I actually wanted to get to is that in the beginning of the split, you've also mentioned, I need to be more active. I need to jump in there more. It seems like you found the balance now between not dying and playing aggressive. So how have you found that? Um, basically, in scrims, I've been really trying to crush the limits, if you can put it that way. Uh, I've been trying to live near the edge. And sometimes it fails, sometimes I just die horribly and it can like lose us a dragon or something. But after all, it's a practice game. So we just try to learn from it and I try to get so, as close as possible to the edge, pretty much. Because then, at that point, you, you can be a really good player because you can push your limits. I want to ask you something a bit more personally about this. Two weeks ago, we named you the MVP of the week. You are one of the newest players to the European LCS scene, despite, of course, being around for a couple of years. Not only are you very close to breaking the lowest deaths in a split record, are you aware you're very close to breaking ManCloud's highest kills in a split? The record is 167. You currently have 148. So if you get 20 kills over the next three games, you beat the record. How do you deal with that pressure and the focus of everyone's eyes being on the star, the amazing Reckless, the MVP, and being close to breaking some of the most incredible stats ever? Well, all I want to do is win the game, so getting stats and stuff is just a bonus, I guess. And I don't really think about this stuff. I just when I win the game, for example, this game, I was really fed, but I didn't think about like, oh, wow, I have so many kills, I can keep getting more. I was just thinking we have to do this and this to win the game, pretty much. So I don't really care about these records. It's just a bonus on the side. Well, I think that's the way it should be played. And you mentioned the game, and actually, you guys were quite ahead, but you came on the stage here and you say, well, you know, that wasn't a flawless victory because in the mid-game, you guys did go in sometimes and I thought maybe it was too aggressive. How did you experience that? Um, I felt like their composition was really good against ours because they had like this split-up team and we had a lot of divers. So it was really hard to get a proper engagement because they just like, at the point when Fizz and Rengar went in, they just throw a Gregas ultimate or a Braum ultimate on our backline. So we get really split up and it's really hard for our like, uh, divers to survive the amount of time it takes for us to come back. So it was really hard to get a proper fight actually in this game and it probably showed it was really messy from my point of view at least. Well, we've got a couple of replays. Let's pull one of them up onto your screen right now. Uh, the replay that we're looking at at the moment is actually much earlier in the game, 23 minutes. You were talking about how it was difficult to get the engages. Now this is uh, one where you catch Copenhagen Wolves in the pit. So let's roll this clip out. And explain to me, what's the communication like in the Fnatic camp? We know Yellowstar's about to flash in and get everyone with those soul shackles. Yeah, so basically they're all stuck in the pit right here. And uh, so was called that he would ulti yellow if he flashed in. So he just tried to get a five-man ulti. I didn't play my best fight here because I was focusing the Braum too much. But they, they were still stuck in the pit here and they have no way to escape. And we just tried to play the kite game pretty much where we wait them out. Let him do the mistake where you see Wool Light here making a mistake trying to walk out. So we were just being as patient as we could, pretty much. We lost the dragon, but we got three kills for one, so it wasn't too bad in the end. So at the end of the day, you're, you're just playing the terrain and making use of that pit to the best. What would you have done better? Because you said you didn't really like the way you started that dragon fight. Um, one of the ideas we had was to instead ulti Rengar instead of yellow, but it was like a, I don't know, it's, I think the fight was really good in our favor. We just lost the Drake, which was a bit unfortunate. And personally, I didn't have the targets to hit because it was really hard when they were hugging the wall in the back. Uh, but I think three for one there, plus them all wasting a lot of summers and stuff, it was not too bad. 
Yeah, absolutely. And he said it was hard to find fights, but if you found them, it went all right. And let's actually take a look at another replay later in the game when you guys were around Baron the whole time, and it seemed like you could have lost that fight if you didn't do the exact right thing. Yeah, so at this point in time, Cyanide's already down. You're about to have a bit of a risky fight, and it pulls back. So let's roll this one out. And similar story, Copenhagen was on Baron, Yellow's engaging, and I think Soas is going to TP in as well. Yeah, so Soas was a bit low here, and he doesn't have the, the kit to regen as I do. So I, I went for red buff on region because he made a call right before that he would base and then TP back. And we just tried to put in their minds that they can actually finish this Baron, right? So we didn't like, show any moves or anything. I was just doing the red buff. We saw them doing it in a ward, and we tried to say, like, we just wait for the 5k mark, then we TP in because they're already low from the Baron, and then we just go on them. And we had a pretty good collapse moment from like three, three angles, so it was really good from our side. You aced them, so I'd say it was pretty good. Congratulations, yeah. great game. Thank you very much. All right, we have to step away to water Zyra and make sure she's getting enough sun. But when we return, it's a crucial seeding matchup as Millennium takes on SK Gaming. Stay tuned. I don't want to sit and let them stop us. We're going to go aggressive, we're going to go hard, we're going to hit him where it hurts and they won't see it coming. Five members of Fnatic as Unlimited is pounced on by Peke off the side there. He drops down and now Broken Shot follows through, gets the kill on Reckless, but they're all caught out. Yellowstar goes in, five man Soul Shackle comes down and will proc on every single member. Soren is the only man around the side. Broken Shot passed away, Reckless leaps back in, gets the reset, goes back in. Soren in trouble, he goes down, it's an eight for Fnatic. Unlimited gonna get caught out, gets stunned down by Cyanide, he goes down. Fnatic are pushing on through, they can take the game, the Nexus turns are all gone. Broken shot, the last man Triple remaining. Kill.